welcome back. I've been gone for a few weeks, was in North Carolina doing some stuff, a little vacation. It was kind of cool while I was gone. Some of the, we had a bunch of new subscribers trickle in, so welcome them. I thought it might be good to just catch up for new people. If, you, if you're new around here, here's kind of what's been going on. We're about six months into learning how to build resonator guitars. I didn't know how to build them when I started. I'm no expert still. I've got a ton of stuff I want to learn and what you're watching right now is me figure this out and I've had a ton of help from you guys. So the first thing I did is I went to Home Depot, I bought some really crappy steel. I tried to make that into a resonator body that failed. I started over and I ended up um, finishing the first one which is, you'll see it hanging over there. That guitar came out really good. I play it all the time. It's fun to play. It plays excellent. It sounds pretty good. It had some things I wanted to improve on it, so I made a second one. The second one uh, came out much, much better. There was just small details and little things that I learned, and the second one came out great. Now we're moving on to the brass one, and um, so far you can see some of it up there. So far we've got the brass top ready to go, and we've got the sound well made, and it's soldered into the brass top. And now we're getting ready to do the back and the sides on this brass one. It turns out that's a very difficult task to make the backs the shape that I want them to be. You're going to see that in this video because that's what we're working on. We're going to work on the back on this thing. And we're also going to work on trying to get the grills uh, on the brass one. The little grills that go in the sound holes, we're going to try and get those made. Somebody had commented that it would be really cool if those were uh, mahogany. And if that mahogany would match the mahogany binding that we're planning on doing on this brass one. Go back and watch build number two if you want to kind of see uh, what's been going on. But yeah, here we are. We're six months in. We're working on the third one. We're learning. We're trying to learn. Okay, for the sound holes on the brass build, I want to make the little grills, let's call them grills, that cover up the sound holes. Uh, you can probably see them on that one there. I want to make those little grills out of the mahogany that will match the binding that we're going to do around the edge of it. My only concern is that they're not going to be strong enough. I'm, I'm worried that when I cut these down into the strips that they need to be, they're going to be so thin and so small that they'll break really, really easily and they're going to be very difficult to replace if they do break. So I'm a little worried about doing them out of wood, but I want to at least give it a go and see if we can make some progress with it. So I think my idea right now is I've got this brass tubing. I'm going to cut slots in this mahogany and I'm going to insert this brass tubing in those slots, glue it all together, and then cap it with another piece of mahogany. Whether that works or not is yet to be seen. I don't know if I'm going to feel good enough about it that I'll actually use it, but I want to at least give it a try because I think it would look really, really sharp if those grills match the binding on this brass body. So for now, let's call that plan A and we'll see if plan A works out. If that doesn't work out, we're going to move to plan B. Don't know what plan B is yet, but we're moving to plan B if this doesn't work out. Okay, plan B. Uh, the copper was working out fine. I was executing it fairly well. Everything was fitting together good. But in the end, I was like, man, I don't really want to use wood glue to put the copper in. And I don't want to use epoxy because then it'd be hard to sandwich that together with the wood glue. And I don't want to epoxy the wood together. I'm just going to use those same pieces I cut the slots in. But I'm going to switch to maple inserts and see if the maple inserts with the two layers of mahogany all glued together gives me a stronger result than I was going to have with just the thin mahogany without any inserts and without any multiple laminations. Okay, let's see if we can pull off plan B. Okay, I've got my reinforced one here and my non-reinforced one here to just see if I've even made anything stronger. So, I mean, obviously I'm not gonna be able to show you on video, but I know how much pressure I'm putting. That thing's pretty stiff. Oh. <laughs> okay, so the reinforced one, the one with glued in strips is way, way stronger. I think what I'm going to do is put these two together. Yeah, I'm going to glue these together and then I'll make strips out of that. And then we'll cut the notches in and try and make the diamond pattern of, out of them. And then we'll just see how strong do we think those are. Is that what we want to do?
think it's made it quite strong. It, it, it's pretty tough to bend it. So I'm hoping these are going to end up being stronger than just a thin piece of mahogany alone without the little maple insert in it. And that that will provide some more strength for these grills. We'll see. That's yet to be determined. So now i got to rip this into three. These are three individual strips. And then those can get made into the mesh. And we'll see how that goes. This is getting to be quite a bit of a process. It's taken me a long time to get to this point. But hopefully it'll be worth it. I'm hoping these are strong enough that I feel comfortable using wood grills instead of brass ones. Okay, there's the two strips that I will cut into shorter pieces to make this mesh on here. And you can see the widths are the same exact widths as the ones that are on this top. And you can see inside here is the piece of maple and the two pieces of mahogany that are all glued together in the hopes that this will be a lot stronger. Okay, those are not correctly laid out yet, but this gives us an idea of kind of where we're headed. You can see these meshes are going to be like that. So now i got to cut the grooves in each one on both sides, get them all glued together. i got to figure out a layout. I might have to do that in CAD and just lay it on there and get it all perfect before I cut the grooves, because I don't know that I'll be able to get it perfect without doing it in CAD first. So. Okay, I want to take a little break from working on those grills. And what I want to do next, I want to carve the ultimate shape of what I want the back to be. You know, that nice curvature with the rolled. Um, I want to carve that shape into the back of this template. And then I'm just going to try hammer forming a back with that curved shape. And let's just take one of those nylon, you know, metal forming hammers and see if we can hammer form a back. I, I have no idea if I can get it smooth and looking good or if it's just gonna be a beat up mess when I'm done, but here we go. Let's see if we can learn to make the back of these things look a little better than the bead rolled edge that I was doing. That I don't know if you guys remember, but the bead roll edge left a little bit of ripple on the really tight corners. Uh, I wasn't super happy with that. And the bead roll, the, the big wide one inch bead roller worked really well and it looks good, but I still don't have that curvature that I want in the back and so I think at this point, I think the only way I'm going to get there is to just carve one of these things and see if I could hammer form something into that shape. Okay, I've turned the lights off because you can see this carve way better with the lights off. The way the sun comes through the windows, it hits it better and you can kind of see the shadows of it. Anyway, I'm calling that pretty good on the carve. Now on this upper corner up here, I decided to just leave it flat around this edge. I actually kind of like the look of it and I think I'm pretty sure that with this amount of curvature across here, that this is going to be plenty strong and I'm not going to need anything there. And I really, on this cutaway version, I didn't like I didn't like the idea of that low part going around that corner there, so I didn't do that. So that was a colossal amount of sanding and work, um, but I'm really happy with it. I think that came out well. The thing to do now is to grab a piece of brass and see if we can make it into this shape. I'm not going to, I'm just going to probably take a small piece and see, just a test piece and see what I get there on that. Anyway, that looks really good. Happy with that carve. If I can get a back to look like that, this is going to be amazing. I'm sure sheet metal people and people that know how to do this right are just cringing right now and just going like, what are you doing? But I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so here we are. I think I need to clamp it better. Ideally, I was thinking it would just make the imprint and everything else would be flat, but clearly that's not going to be the case. This is challenging. This is going to be interesting to see if we can get this thing smooth. Um, that actually went a little better than I thought it was going to. I still sort of have an amateur looking result. Like it's not, it's not totally perfect. Am I confident enough to throw a $140 piece of brass up on my template and just start hammering the crap out of it? Not really. Am I going to? Yeah, I think I am. How else am I going to get there? It actually doesn't look that bad. It also doesn't look that great. Okay, I ordered this sheet of brass from um, Online Metals. And I think it was, let's see here, it was $118. So $118 just for one sheet of this brass. I'm telling you, the, the, brass, the brass builds are not cheap. Um, much, much more expensive than the mild steel. I got this piece from Online Metals and I got the two pieces for the sides from McMaster Carr. Um, it just worked out to be cheaper that way. McMaster Carr wanted more for this sheet and they wanted less for the cut sides 
online metals wanted way more for the cut sides but cheaper here so anyway that's how i did it i was concerned that they might not match i mean they're both 260 brass but you know you never know but they match perfectly i had no issues there so it doesn't seem to matter if you get 260 brass from different places i don't think it matters in fact even the 260 brass that i had sent bruce for cutting out the the tops uh matches it perfectly too and i think that came from a third place i don't remember where i ordered that from but anyway what i'm learning about ordering metals online and having metals shipped around is that every time you get them the corners are all bent up or the edges are rippled or like they, they never come perfect like they're always something's always wrong with them on the edge usually not in the middle they're pretty good but the edges always seem to take a beating this is the first piece of metal i've got that hasn't had that issue it's actually perfect all the way around the corners and through the edges and everything so good job online metals they package that really well okay i'm ready to cut the back out of this brass sheet i'm just going to use this as my template just trace around it and then cut it um i don't know how many of you watched that video where i modified the bandsaw to slow the blade speed down so i could cut the metal stuff on it easier i'm really happy i did that that saw is working out much much better i feel good about that change to it it makes it so that i can do the cutting out of this stuff uh, on my own the simple shapes you know the one with all the inside detail is much much harder to do but just for a back to cut out all the back and the tabs saves me a lot of money to just do that myself on that bandsaw than to have that thing laser cut or hydrojet cut or you know any other option so happy about that bandsaw mod i'm not sure yet if i'm ready to throw this back onto that template that i carved and start hammer forming it it almost might be nice if this video dropped in i got some input from some of you guys that are good at stuff like this there's some people who are just sheet metal people that have been watching and commenting and have helped me tremendously with learning how to do some of this stuff it might it might be worth it for me to just wait to to hammer form this thing and tell some of you guys comment and tell me dude you're an idiot you're doing it all wrong one interesting thing i've noticed is a lot of these brass ones with the cutaway and stuff, I'm noticing that, you know, from National and, and Regal and some of the other companies, they have flat backs on them. They're just, they're perfectly flat. I don't know if they have the mushroom posts inside them that keep them stiff or not. They might. Um, I, I don't know why they're flat on those ones. Maybe cost. Maybe it's just a cost thing. I mean, this brass isn't cheap. And so maybe to save money on the brass ones, they don't do all that forming of the brass just to offset some of those costs. I don't know what the reason is, but honestly, I mean, flat would be fine. I don't dislike the flat back, but I feel like on the hump of learning how to shape these backs, I'm still on this side of that hump. So I feel like, yeah, we could make a flat one, but but why? Let's, let's keep pushing forward and see if I can get over this hump that I'm struggling with on forming these backs. You know, a guy like me, just an amateur without all the big heavy duty stamping tools or presses or any of that stuff, can can i get that cool shape okay that back is cut out you can see i was pretty conservative on how close i got to the line with these little uh, tabs it's really important that you don't cut these too deep and they get exposed after they bent over you don't want to see that slot so i've been really conservative on cutting those things not as deep as uh, the line shows there so and I think once this thing gets formed and shaped, you know, it's going to stretch and things are going to be weird. And so I just want some wiggle room there. Honestly, now that I see this thing all cut out like this and with the tabs on there, I'm really tempted to throw it on here and just start hammer forming it because, I mean, when I look at it like this, like big deal. So we waste this thing. I don't know. I, I'm going to try and resist doing that and hold off until maybe some of you give me some insights. Well, I've never been much for waiting, so let's just line this thing up on this template and start hitting it with the hammer. That first swing is going to be tough, but once I get three or four swings in, I'm sure it'll be, okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. I've marked out the maximum limit, like you don't want to hit anywhere on the other side of this dashed line. That would be bad. So all the forming is going to be done on this side of the line. So as soon as I hit this thing, there's no turning back. So ready? Here we go. Let's hit it. Well, maybe this isn't going to be so bad. It's curling up, obviously. I'm going to leave that till the end to try and get that back down. I don't know if this is the right way to go about it, obviously.
I've been at this for quite a while now and it's really amazing what I'm learning. I have, it is so smooth right through here because I literally just spent time, like instead of just going fast around here and hitting this thing, I just worked tiny little areas and tried to just go over it like that. You know what I mean? Almost like you're painting with a little tiny brush. It was more curled up on the sides, but I've been starting to work it down. I have a bunch of areas that aren't smooth yet, but I know that I can get smooth based on this area here. I almost want to just run this thing through the bead roller right now. And if it makes a hard edge kind of near this black line, maybe I can just, maybe it'd be easier to hammer form over that hard edge into something soft and have the bead roller do what it does through here and see how it is. Hmm. It's a tough choice whether or not I want to run this through the bead roller. I may just make it, you know, end up looking like the back on number two, which is not a bad thing. Yeah, I think let's bead roll this thing, just light pressure bead roll and see how I feel about that. And then we'll go back to hammer forming. If it makes any hard edges on this inside, we'll go back to hammer forming that hard edge into something that's not hard. Okay, let's see if you can see this on the camera. You can see it's going to make such a hard edge on both sides because this roller is not a, a smooth curve. It's got this hard edge and this hard edge, even though the wheel is really smooth here these edges are what's making the hard edge on my on my back maybe this is just the wrong roller maybe i need to get a better roller okay i think that pressure is way too light i don't think it's doing what i want it to do you know what though it's actually doing something maybe really light pressure is just what we want here i tell you the learning moments never stop around here when you don't know what you're doing, it's easy to learn something, that's for sure. That was fast. Okay, let's take that out and reassess. Oh, I think it's actually smoothed that out a bunch. Yeah, it did. It hasn't made a hard edge yet. Let's do that again, but with some more pressure. That was just finger tight before. I'm going to do a finger tight again, but a little bit more finger tight. Okay. Oh, that's definitely more pressure. Oh yeah, it's definitely doing a lot more this time. I'm going slower now because I think it's a bit more critical. Maybe that was just the key. Maybe I just had way too much pressure on number two and it gave me that hard edge. Maybe because I'm using way less pressure this time, I'm way better off. No hard edge. It's pretty smooth. You know, that's actually pretty darn good. Okay, I might try and work with that. You know, I think at this point I'm going to stop and I'm going to wait for advice from people. And I might reach out to a couple of people that might be able to help me. Look how cool that curvature is. That is so cool. <laughs> you know what? I'm almost there. Like, that's almost it. I don't know if you can tell, but it sinks curved this way. It's a little bit curved this way. Oil canning's not an issue with it all clamp i mean it moves a little bit but it's pretty darn strong it's got this nice dish all the way around i mean i kind of did it totally by accident i kind of did it i think i'm on the right track here we may have actually made the shape that i was after i can't believe we may have actually made the shape i was after but i think we did all right, I think we can get out of here. That was really good progress this week. I don't know what the next step moving forward will be. Maybe just waiting for some of the thoughts that come in on the comment section. We'll get my mind going and then I'll kind of know how to keep moving forward. But I feel like I made a lot of progress on it so far. Pretty happy with it. That's good. Uh, yeah, I think we can get out of here. I don't know that I'm gonna continue to do this on a weekly pace. That was <laughs> that may not be a sustainable thing for me. A weekly is pretty tough to get a video out every week. But we'll see. Who knows? Uh, yeah, that's it. Let's go. Good progress. We'll see you soon.